Hello and welcome back to the first video for topic three. This is networks and we're going to be identifying different types of networks. This is for the IB diploma in computer science. So as you can see, we're now on topic three. This is from the core units. There are four core units. Okay, and this is the first video under network fundamentals. There are three sections to this, network fundamentals, data transmission, and wireless networking. And there are five videos in this first part. Under data transmission, we've got a further six videos. And then we've got a further five videos under wireless networking. Okay, so it's quite a big topic. So what do we need to know? Learning objectives for this are identify and define various types of networks, including LAN, VLAN, WAN, SAN, um, WLAN, internet, extranet, VPN, PAN, and peer-to-peer -peer networking. We need to understand the roles of servers and clients in a network, explain the functions of key networking components, i.e. a hub, a switch, and a router, analyze real-world examples of network implementations, and then finally compare different types of networks to understand their similarities and differences. Okay, well, we'll start with a little overview. Networks are fundamental to modern communications, enabling the sharing of information and resources across vast differences around the globe. They form the backbone of the internet, connecting billions of devices worldwide. The internet, for example, is a global network that connects devices such as computers, smartphones, and servers, allowing users to access and share information from wherever they are. Let's break it down to this it's very, very basics. A computer network is comprising of two or more computer systems. But they're connected and able to communicate and exchange data. These systems are connected using either cable or wireless media. The first term we're going to learn is a server. A server is a computer system or software application that provides a service to other systems on a network. Whereas a client, the second word we need to know, a computer system or software application that requests a service from a server on the network. Okay. So the servers, just to recap, provide services such as file storage, email, or web hosting. An example of file server allows other computers on the network to store and share files. Clients request services, as you can see here, from the server. An example, an email client fetches emails from an email server. So the server shares the resources responding to the requests from the client. The client is the one who requests the resources. It does not share these resources. Okay. Furthermore, we've got some components to allow us to do this, to connect different devices together. So for example, we've got a hub. The hub is a connection point for devices on a network. You can see these ports here. It sends data to all devices connected to its ports, but it's creating unnecessary traffic. Whereas a switch is also a connection point like a hub, but can identify which device is connected to which port, sends data only to the intended recipient, ideally reducing unnecessary traffic. On the router, it connects multiple networks and serves as an intermediary. So here we go, we've got an example, I've got a picture drawn here of a local area network. So what is a LAN? It's a network that connects devices within a limited area, such as a home, an office, or a school, so a small area, a building, let's say. LANs are typically used for sharing resources like files, uh, printers, you can see here, files stored on the server, or the printer, and the internet connections among connected devices. These devices are not necessarily wired in, such as this client here and this printer, but there could be wireless connections, which I've shown here. Okay, so characteristics, high-speed data transfer, limited to a small geographic area, easy to manage and easy to secure. Okay, an example might be an office network where computers, printers, and other devices are connected, enabling file sharing and communication among the employees of that company. Okay, a LAN in a school allows students to access shared files, use network printers, and connect to the internet. A good example there, a school. We've also got something called a VLAN, okay, which is a virtual local area network. But don't see this has been similar to virtual memory, it's not. A virtual local area network a VLAN is a segmented network within a physical LAN that allows devices to be grouped logically regardless of their physical location. So we can group different sort of mini networks within a large network. Okay, VLAN improves network security and efficiency by isolating network traffic. Obviously, just like a normal LAN, we've got high speed data transfer, it's limited to a small geographical area, and it's easy to manage and secure. 
In a corporate office, different departments, e.g. HR, finance, or IT, can have separate VLANs to ensure secure communications within each department. An example might be a university campus. It may use a VLAN to separate students, faculties, and administrative network traffic. And then we move on to a WAN, which is a wide area network. This is basically a connection of LANs, as you can see here. So the wide area network is a network that, which covers a very large geographical area, often connecting multiple LANs across cities, countries, or even continents. WANs enable long distance communication and resource sharing between remote locations. WANs enable long distance communication and resource sharing between remote locations. I've got another little video here, a third party video, which um, I'll put in the link below. So characteristics, it covers a large geographic area. It's slower data transfer speeds compared to that of a LAN. It can be public, e.g. the internet, or private, e.g. a corporate WAN. The internet is the most widely recognized WAN connecting networks and devices across the world. An example might be a multinational company uses a WAN to connect its offices across different countries, allowing employees to collaborate and share resources. We've then got something called a SAN, which is a storage area network. And a storage area network is a high-speed network dedicated to connecting storage devices to servers. Okay, SANs are used in data centers to improve storage management and performance. You can see here, we've got like a mini LAN network connected to a mail server, an app server, and a database server, but this in turn is connected to a switch where we can store lots and lots and lots of information, lots of data in these sort of data repositories here. So centralizes storage resources for better management, high-speed data transfer between storage devices and servers, provide scalability and redundancy. Okay, in a data center, a SAN connects multiple servers to shared storage devices, enabling efficient data storage and retrieval, as you can see here. Okay, SANs are used by enterprises to manage large volumes of data, ensuring high availability and disaster recovery. A wireless area network, a WLAN, is basically exactly the same as a LAN, but it's a wireless LAN. So it's using wireless technology, e.g. Wi-Fi, to connect devices within a limited area, like a home, an office, or a campus, as before. WLANs eliminate the need for physical cables, providing flexibility and mobility. It uses wireless communication, e.g. radio waves. It's got limited range compared with wired LANs, and the security concerns due to wireless access, there are more concerns there. Example might be an old Wi-Fi network allowing devices like laptops, smartphones, and smart TVs to connect to the internet wirelessly. WLANs are common in public spaces like cafes, airports, and libraries providing internet access to users. So if you go into your local coffee shop and it's got a, um, it's got Wi-Fi and you ask for the password, you can use this Wi-Fi. But as soon as you leave the coffee shop, you start walking down the road, then that Wi-Fi will drop because the the local area network isn't long enough to sort of keep keep on keep carrying the signal. Also, it's, it's, it's a security measure because the cafe doesn't want the next door neighbor or the next 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 door neighbors to be using their Wi-Fi. So it does keep it sort of within a, uh, the desired space, i.e. the cafe. Um, the internet, the internet is a global network of interconnecting computer networks. We've just described it as a WAN that enables data exchange and communication between billions of devices. It operates on the principles of TCP, IP, Transmission Pro uh, Control Protocol, and Internet Protocol Suites. Okay, it's decentralized global. It provides access to vast amounts of information and services. It supports various applications like web browsing, email, and streaming. Okay, an example, again, accessing a website, sending an email, or streaming a video are all activities enabled by the internet. Yeah, the internet is essential for online education, e-commerce, social media, and global communication. Whereas the extranet, it's a little bit weird this because you thought the extranet would be the internet and more, but the extranet is actually a private network that allows authorized external users to access specific resources within an organization's internal network. It is often used for collaboration between business partners, suppliers, and customers. Well, what does that mean? Well. We're providing controlled access to external users. We're enhancing collaboration and communication with external stakeholders, and we're securing sensitive information. So a supplier portal where suppliers can access inventory lists, submit orders, and, re and receive updates from the manufacturing company would be useful in this case. Also, a great example might be a hospital, a healthcare provider. 
and this may use the extranet to allow patients to access the medical records and communication with doctors. They could access their medical records from anywhere in the world, but they can only ac access these specific areas. Okay, and that's the idea of the extranet. A VPN, I'm sure most of us are familiar with, a virtual private network. It creates a secure and encrypted connection over a public network, typically the internet, to protect data privacy and security. VPNs are commonly used to ensure autonomy and secure data transmission. Okay, so it's encrypting data to protect it from unauthorized access. But it allows remote access to internal resources. It can bypass geographic restrictions on content. An example might be Netflix. You've got your, you live in the States, or you live, in a, live in, a, in a certain country, and your favorite shows on Netflix, but you move over to a different country, um, go on a holiday, but you don't want to miss your show, using a VPN can pretend that you are in, back in America or wherever to watch your show. So it's sort of ghosting out basically your location or telling your locate, telling you or telling your computer, your device, that you are somewhere else in the world. A remote employee might use a VPN to securely access their company's internal network from home. Okay, VPNs are widely used for secure remote work, online privacy, and accessing regional restricted content, as I just mentioned, maybe Netflix in a different country. Okay, and then we've got a PAN network, which is a personal area network. Again, something that might be running off Bluetooth. It's a very, very sh small, short-range network used for, for connecting devices within the immediate vicinity of an individual, typically within a range of maybe a few meters. So this might be your phone talking to your watch, which in turn is talking to your laptop. PANs are often used for personal or household purposes. Okay, short range, typically a few meters. If you want to, if you've gone to the beach maybe and you want to connect your phone to a, a Bluetooth speaker, this is an ex example, it would be using a PAN network. Limited to personal devices. Here we go, a Bluetooth connection between a smartphone and a wireless set of headphones forms a PAN network. Okay, PANs are used for connecting wearable devices like smartwatches, fitness trackers, and wireless peripherals. And then finally, we have a peer-to-peer -peer network, and this is a decentralized network where devices, often referred to as peers, communicate and share resources directly with each other without the need of a central server. So somebody might have something stored on their computer and they can share it with somebody else on their computer without actually the, that file going to a server, it's actually stored on somebody's hard disk, okay? And then it can be copied and saved onto somebody else's hard disk. That's the idea of peer-to-peer. Peer-to-peer -peer networks are commonly used for file sharing and distributed computing. An example might be um, file sharing through peer-to-peer -peer applications like, uh, like a bit, bit torrent, where files are distributed among multiple peers. Okay, Peer-to-peer -peer networks are often using cryptocurrency networks, e.g. Bitcoin, and sh for sharing large files without relying on a central server. Okay, And there I've just broken down the differences so we've got LANs and VLANs are a, a, a small range, whereas the WAN is a large range. The SAN is based in dense data centers. A, a wireless LAN could be small or medium. The internet is obviously global, extranet private, uh, external users. Um, VPN, it varies in terms of range, and a PAN is a very, very small personal range. And of course, a peer-to-peer -peer network as well varies. So they're the cases, that's where, just to recap on where we've been using them, and we've got some key features there which we've mentioned before. Okay, so just to summarize, just to, just to finish off before we get to the exam questions, networks vary in size, purpose, and architecture, each serving specific needs. Understanding the characteristic of different network types helps in selecting the right network for the right application. Networks are integral, to modern communication, business operation, and global connectivity. Okay, so here are the exam questions. Again, I'll read them out, pause the video if you want to have a little go, and then play it back, and you can see my answers um, shortly after. Okay, so question one, define a virtual private network, a VPN, and explain its primary purpose. Question two, describe the characteristics and typical use case of a storage area network, a SAN, and finally, explain how a wide area network, a WAN, differs from a local area network, a LAN, and discuss the advantages of using a WAN for a multinational company. Okay, and we've got two marks, four marks, and six marks. Okay, so obviously I want more from question three. 
So to answer these questions, a virtual private network VPN is a technology that creates a secure and encrypted connection over a public network, such as the internet, to protect data privacy and security. Its primary purpose is to enable users to securely access a private network and share data remotely. Question two, a storage area network is a high-speed network dedicated to connecting storage devices to servers providing centralized and scalable storage solutions. It is typically used in data centers to manage large volumes of data efficiently. SANS offer high-speed data transfer, redundancy, and centralized management, making them ideal for enterprises that require reliable and efficient data storage and retrieval. Okay, and finally, question three, a wide area network covers a large geographical area, such as cities, countries, or continents, connecting multiple local area networks lands across long distances. In contrast, a LAN is combined to a small geographical area, like a single building or a school campus. The main advantages of using a WAN for a multinational company is that it enables communication resources shared between remote offices across different regions, facilitating collaboration, access to centralized data, and operational efficiency. Additionally, WANs can connect the company to the global internet allowing employees to communicate and collaborate with partners and customers worldwide. Okay, so that is it for this first video on topic three networks. Okay, so hopefully you've enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Bye for now. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.